Saturday, July 11th, 1992, may well go down in history, and the record books is the day the world's largest cookie was made. And where else but in Ripon, Wisconsin, Cookie Town, USA. Yet again, another shining example of the great things that can happen right here in our community when everyone gets together and pitches in. And what a project it was. Rippin' Foods President Ed Bumby and Director of Manufacturing Lee Prowitz were first approached with the idea in the early part of 1992 by Rippin' Fast Committee members Tim Like of the Rippin' Commonwealth Press and President Pete Kasabuski of Rippin' Area Builders. It was agreed that Rippin' Foods would provide the ingredients needed as well as the technical assistance. Many meetings and get-togethers followed right up to the actual construction of the oven, which you're seeing right now. Mike McGuire of Rippon's Wisconsin Power and Light played an important role in the project designing and building the burners needed to bake the cookie as well as helping out to get things started. Here we see Mike and Pete spot welding the band on which the dough would be placed, all 3,500 pounds of it. Last minute changes, of which there were a few, included Guinness stipulating that the cookie in its final form must be at least one inch thick. And, of course, Guinness was pretty picky about sanitary conditions, and understandably so. People were planning on coming to see the cookie made and baked, and also intent on sinking their teeth into a part of it. Prior to the polishing of the surface area, rough surfaces on the band were removed, making it as smooth as possible. No amount of pre-planning could preclude the need for last-minute huddles such as this one, with Lee, Mike, and Pete. Sanitary requirements made it necessary to polish the entire surface. Then came the next important step, installing the burners above and below the band to ensure an even baking process. Mike ran a special gas line to the area, one inch in diameter, with 18 pounds of pressure and capable of delivering over one million BTUs. After everything was in place underneath, the oven was test fired and the grass burned off. The test firing included a test turn of the band powered by a one horse motor revolving twice each minute. The top burners were put into place and also tested. Sanitary measures continued to be observed throughout the procedure. Health inspector Dottie Norris was on hand to ensure everything was in order and set to go. Now what would an oven be without a cover? Here you see sections of it being wiped down and cleaned with Lee providing a good amount of elbow grease. Plexiglass windows were brought in and put into place. They would allow everyone on hand for the big event to see the actual baking process once everything was set to go. Sections of the cover were assembled and once again the burners were test fired to make sure the oven would be hot enough. And it was. Was the work done? Well, not exactly. Time now for a test bake. Assuming yet another role, Doughboys, Pete and Mike, as well as others on hand, spread the dough out over several areas of the band to ensure the baking process would indeed be uniform throughout the oven's entire area. The cover was again lowered into place, the burners lit, and voila! Out came several of what probably were the world's largest mini-bit bite-sized chocolate chip cookies, at least up to that point. A taste test told those present the green light was on and the project a definite go. 3,500 pounds of dough would be needed for the project, and representatives from Fox City Scale were brought in to verify the accuracy of the scales using 20 50-pound weights, another Guinness requirement. Two batches of dough were prepared in mixers 9 and 10 with each receiving 1800 pounds of ingredients and almost 4 million, count them, 4 million mini bit chocolate chips. The next step was to get the dough from the mixers to the oven. <laughs> Easier said than done. Dough was removed and placed in buckets 70 pounds to each container. A refrigerated truck was used to transport the dough, and Rippon's Finest were on hand to provide a police escort to the site. And it's a good thing they did. The crowd, as they say, 
was ready and waiting. Final preparations were completed, and the bottom burners fired up to preheat the band. The sealed trailer doors were opened and the dough removed. And they're off! The dough was put into place on the band, and the spreading process began. Measurements were taken throughout the process to ensure it was at least three quarters of an inch thick. Virtually everyone, it seemed, was up to their elbows in dough, lending a helping hand. Mud pies were never this much fun. Everyone remained calm throughout it all, though, limiting the use of their rolling pins to the spreading of the dough. Those not directly involved in the spreading process volunteered their vocal support, watching it all take place. Others read special editions of the Doughboy Press, purchased specially made t-shirts, even the Cookie Monster was on hand. And then, all of a sudden, or was it two hours later, everything was set to go. The time had come. The workers, elbow to elbow, cheek to cheek and chip to chip, were all done. The catwalks were emptied. The one-horse drive motor hooked up. The cover put into place one last time, and the burners fired up. This time, all for real. This one was for the record. Two and a half hours slowly ticked by. Then it was time for the first taste test. Mmm-mmm, ripping good. A second taste test was taken from the center to make sure the cookie was baked throughout. And it was. The covers were removed to reveal the final product. The world's largest cookie. Measurements were taken, and then came the part that thousands had been waiting for. The cutting and eating of it. Pizza cutters were specially rigged to cut the big cookie into thousands of smaller ones. How do you remove the world's largest cookie? Well, with similar size spatulas, of course. Here we see Rippin' Fast Committee member Tim Like presenting the tools to John and Ed Bumby, as well as Pete Kasabuski. Miss Rippin' Fast Tammy Moffat tasted the first piece and was joined in the taste test by John. Then, well, it was everybody's turn. Trays of the finished product were packaged and first passed through a metal detector. Again, everyone pitched in and helped a huge line quickly formed. Much of the world's largest cookie simply disappeared right on the spot. And what could possibly go better with cookies than milk? Provided here, courtesy of Dean Foods. And so another Rippin' Fest had come and gone. But you can bet this one will be remembered for years to come. Not just because it marked the creation of the world's largest cookie, but more importantly, because it showed once again the community support and community pride present here in Ripon, Cookie Town, USA.